ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فاولئك هم الخاسرون واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله مبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Indeed all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we praise him in a manner that he alone deserves to be praised and we seek his assistance and we seek his guidance and we seek his forgiveness and we turn to him in repent in repentance and we place our faith and our conviction in him alone as well as our trust and i testify that there is none worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger to mankind and i urge the believers to the taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as i welcome the believers into the house of allah i ask allah to shower us with his mercy and to protect us from the punishment of his hell fire allahumma amin there is a word in the quran there is a word in the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he uses to describe someone who possesses some of the worst qualities and characteristics known to man he uses this word to describe the one who is ungrateful and greedy and covetous and stingy and he has this vicious love for material good and he uses this word to describe the one who is unjust and transgressive and stubborn and stuck in his ways and on top of that he has this sense of self entitlement and then in other places and in other cases he uses this word to describe the one who is unstable and unfaithful and at times vulnerable and weak and always on the verge of despair and i doubt that many of us would be able to guess this word this word that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to describe this individual that possesses all of these characteristics believe it or not is insan insan and i know that linguistically insan it means the human being but i'm not talking about the definition of the word i'm talking about the context in which it is used in the quran <laughs> didn't allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say qutila al insanu ma akfara death or destroyed is insan how ungrateful he is didn't he say inna al insana li rabbihi lakanud indeed the insan the human being to his lord is definitely disloyal didn't he say kalla inna al insana la yatgha nay indeed the insan is transgressive in surah al isra alone allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said wa kana al insanu kafura wa kana al insanu qatura wa kana al insanu ajula he said that the, the, the insan he is ever ungrateful and ever so hasty and ever so stingy this is not a rare occurrence in the quran rather it is the consistent narrative surrounding the mention of the word insan in the quran from wa khuliqa al insan dha'ifa all the way to inna al insana la fi khusr from and we created insan weak all the way to indeed the insan is in a state of loss 
This word, in fact, it is only mentioned about 65 times in the Quran. And this is the picture that it paints. It tells a story of grave ingratitude. And this is a word, as we might ascertain, that could easily be used in a plethora of different contexts. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine wisdom and for his divine purposes, he decides to confine this word in a very specific context. And so I hope today that by examining this linguistic phenomenon in the Quran, we will learn something beneficial and beautiful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will learn something beneficial and beautiful about the Quran and its majestic style. And we will also learn something about ourselves as insan. And so there are several different categories that we have to pass through today in order to arrive at level ground. The first are those verses that mention insan directly in relationship to the word ingratitude. And those verses, they are about eight in number, and some I have mentioned already. The second category are those verses that mention the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the insan. And the origin of that favor is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created the insan. And he reiterated and re-emphasized this point in the Quran about 17 times. لَقَدَ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We created the insan, the human being, in the best of modes. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ We created the insan from a nutfa, from a semen drop, and then all of a sudden, he is an open opponent. He said, And this is the favor of knowledge and intelligence. We taught the insan that which he did not know. And sufficient is the verse where he says, And we gave you from everything that you asked. And if you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't be able to account for them all. Indeed, the insan, the human being, is unjust, ungrateful. The next category are those verses that lay out the foundation of those qualities upon which the ingratitude of the insan is built. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا That he is created weak. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ أَجَلْ That the insan was created from haste. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا As well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the insan, he was created unstable. And this is the foundation of his ingratitude. And then the last category that I'll mention today are those verses that mention the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the insan through in order to make apparent whether this insan is going to be grateful or ungrateful. And from these verses, which are about 12 in number, Allah says, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَكُولُ رَبِّهِ أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبَتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا He said, as for the insan, when his Lord tests him and he honors him and blesses him, he says, my Lord has honored me. But when he tests him and he restricts his provision, he says, my Lord has disgraced me. And so this test is there to see how is the insan going to behave? Is he going to be grateful or is he going to be ungrateful? And so now the big question is, as someone might ask, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depict the insan in the Quran in this way? Someone might ask, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despise the insan didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the insan? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depict the insan in such a negative light? This is because, brothers and sisters, and we always have to maintain positive thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting forth this description of insan in the Quran, it is in general the depiction of insan as he would be without iman. As he would be without faith and conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why that in so many of those places where he puts forth these descriptions, he comes back and he provides the exception to the rule. The believer is the exception to the rule. So when he says, When he says the insan is in a state of loss, then he comes back and he makes the exception by saying, Except Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds. And then he said elsewhere, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We created the insan in the best of modes. ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ And then we reduce him to the lowest of the low. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al-insana khuliqa halu'a, indeed the insan has been created unstable. Ida masahu sharru jazu'a, and when evil touches him, he becomes disturbed and flustered. Wa ida masahu al khayru manu'a, and when good touches him, he becomes covetous, preventing anyone else from partaking in that good and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he comes back with the exception to the rule except for those who pray those who are upon their prayer at all times the believer brothers and sisters is the exception to the rule بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات وذكر الحكيم أقول قولا هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Number one, we always have to maintain a positive idea about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone may come to us with information and on surface value, we may not truly comprehend the intent and the wisdom behind that information, but it does not change the fact that us as believers we should always have positive thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in reality, there is a silver line. You as believers, you are that silver line. And that no, the focus should not be on the negative aspect of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has portrayed the insan in the Quran. Rather, this is actually to show us the true value of iman. That Iman is something that should in reality make us like superhuman. <laughs> yes, we are insan. Yes, we are human. But our Iman is there to refine us and to take us and shape us and to emancipate us from some of the worst qualities and character flaws known to the human being. That is the true value of Iman, and that is what it did for the companions and for the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam. Just look at Mecca before the advent of, of Islam, and look at it after the revelation descended, and Iman had taken its hearts in the place of the believers. The difference is like that of the East and the West. And so when we hear these narrations and these accounts of their lives and some of the superhuman things that they did to the point that it almost sounds mythology, mythological, we don't have to wonder what was their secret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has told us the secret and that is iman. When we allow it to do what it is supposed to do, it will impact us as an ummah and a community in the very same way. And we will see the prosperity again, inshallah ta'ala. 
indeed has spoken the truth, the one who said, La adri aina akunu lola islami, fala yamna'uni min al fawahish illa imani. Indeed has spoken the truth, the one who said, I would not know where I would be if it was not for my Islam, for nothing prevents me from indecency except for my Iman. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ اللهم إنا نسألك من فضلك العظيم وأجر كريم وثبت أقدامنا على صراطك المستقيم يا عزيز يا كريم اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفونا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفونا ربنا لا تأخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعفونا واغفر لنا أنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله